Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. Today I will cover another fundamental topic for Adobe After Effects and that is how to work with 3D. Not only is After Effects great for compositing a large number of 2D layers together, it also includes a lot of features to create great looking three-dimensional effects. For example, every layer in your composition can be a 3D layer. This gives you the ability to place that layer in the 3D space of your scene at will. Oh, this is interesting. You can define and place a camera in your scene that defines how the 3D elements in your composition will be rendered. Finally, you can add different types of lights into your scene to illuminate your 3D layers. Ah, this, this is much better. This is going to be a beginner tutorial for After Effects, so I will not assume that you have much experience using it. However, I do recommend that you check out some of my other introductory tutorials first, so that you're familiar with the interface of After Effects and how to create some basic 2D effects before jumping into a third dimension. But enough of me talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Since this is going to be a basic tutorial on how to work with 3D in Adobe After Effects, I have an absolutely empty composition here. Now let's import some footage into this composition. I have a number of random video clips and images here that we are going to work with for this tutorial. So let's select this image here, Sunrise. Drag this into your composition to create a new layer. It's simply a sunrise photo that I took while being out on holiday. Since this is just a photo rather than a video, nothing will happen if you scrub through your composition. But we can make this a little bit more interesting by turning this photo into a 3D layer. Any layer that you import into your composition, you can turn into a 3D layer. And the way you do this is you go over into your layer window and there are a number of switches here. If you can't see these switches, don't panic. There's a toggle switches and modes button at the bottom here. And if you click that, you toggle between the blend modes and the track mats and the normal switches. So make sure you can see the switches for your layer. Over on the very right here, this little 3D cube is the switch for the 3D layer option. In order to turn our sunrise layer into a 3D layer, all we have to do is check this little tick box here. Hmm, nothing has really changed, except that we can now see a 3D positioning gizmo on our layer. You can use this gizmo to position this 3D layer, this photo that we have here, anywhere in the 3D space of your scene. Moving the image left and right, obviously you can also do with a 2D layer, but you can also move this layer down into Z space. Now, that sounds really fancy, but all it means is that you're moving the layer further away or closer to the camera that is viewing this scene. So while it might look like the image is getting smaller or bigger, we're actually moving it further away from the camera. Let's move this layer a little bit closer again so we can see what's going on. Obviously, you can also rotate this image because it is now a 3D layer, and this is where you can actually see that it is a 3D layer that is sitting in space. So you can rotate the axis any way you want and you can position this image in the 3D space of your scene. So again, because it's a static image and we haven't actually animated anything, it's just sitting by itself over on the right side of our composition. Let's import another image into our composition. I'm going to select this other image that I have here called country, which is just a simple photo that I took of a country scene. One thing to note, obviously the render order of your layers, it's bottom up, so the country image sitting on top of our sunrise image will cover it up. If we drag this over, then the sunrise image will sit on top of our country image. Um, doesn't really matter because I'm going to turn this country layer into a 3D layer, again by enabling the 3D switch on the layer. Now you may have noticed that just by turning this into a 3D layer, we can no longer see the sunrise photo I have here. So if I turn the switch off, the sunrise photo will appear again. That is because once it's a 3D layer, which layer is visible depends on the depth of the image in the scene. So if an image is in front of another one in the 3D space of your scene, it will cover up the image behind it. So in order to reveal our sunrise image again, what we'd have to do is we'd have to push back this country image in Z space. So we'd have to push it away from the camera. You can see it overlapping the moment it is closer to the camera than this particular image. So let's move this over to the left side here. Again, let's rotate this a little bit and maybe I'll push it even further away yeah, about there sounds right. Now, one interesting thing is you can actually change the way you interact with these positioning gizmos. And for that, you can change the axis modes. In the toolbar panel at the very top of your application, you have three little switches which change the axis mode. 
I'm currently set to world axis mode, which means this gizmo will always be positioned in world space. If I change this over here on the left side, if I change this to local axis mode, did you see the gizmo snap to the image? If I move this image around now, you will notice that the gizmo will follow the position of this image. The gizmo is using the local space of this layer to define its orientation. I can set this back to world space and the gizmo will be back in world space. I actually find it a bit easier to work with it this way, um, even though the z-axis is a bit hard to match, so sometimes you can just switch it back to object mode. And um, there's also another one which is a view axis mode, which will only be different if you actually use a camera, which we haven't done yet. So let's leave it in world axis mode for now. Let's rotate this back again so it sits a little bit separate from the sunrise image. One thing you will have to do when working with 3D layers, you will have to position it properly in your 3D space. After Effects actually gives you a few different ways to do this a little bit more efficiently. For one, you can actually change the view. You can change the view of your preview window to be the front view, the left view, the top view, back, right or bottom view. So if you change this to the left view, for example, this is your scene from the left. So you can see those two layers are quite far apart. So if you see this from the top, for example, this is my sunrise image being a bit more in the front. So if you imagine the camera being down here at the bottom, sunrise image over on the right side and then the country image a bit further back on the left. Now when working with 3D I actually like to use the four screen split view which shows you the top left front and the right view separately so you can kind of move your elements around in one view and you'll see it update in the other one. Just makes it a bit easier to position the elements nicely in your scene. But let's go back to the one view and let's go back to the active camera. Let's make this nice and big again and let's move this image back into the scene. Now we are working in 3D so usually when you're working with 3D you also want to add a camera into your composition. You can add a camera into your composition by going to the two menu and going to layer new camera. A little pop-up window will come up where you define your camera settings. Now there are a lot of things in here I'm not going to go over everything in detail I'm just going to call this camera. I'm going to leave this on 35 millimeter here you can actually set the focal length of your camera or um, the angle of view. You can change a whole bunch of things in here but again I'm not going to go into too much detail. All we want to do is create a camera so all you have to do is give it a useful name and then click OK. Now this is actually our composition as seen by the camera. You can actually disable the camera if you want to and you're kind of going back to the simple front on view and um, right now they're kind of the same thing but let's do something different. Let's move this camera around so you can actually see the power of 3D in After Effects. In order to move your camera go up to the toolbar and just a little bit over on the right side you will find a number of controls for the camera. There's the unified camera tool, the orbit camera tool, the track XY camera tool and the track Z camera tool. Interestingly enough all of them have the shortcut C and the way this works is that if you select this tool, go over into your view, you can actually press C to rotate through all of the different camera modes. So for example if I press C I'll go into the orbit tool, track XY or track Z. And what you can do is you can click and drag to orbit the camera while in orbit mode. I press C to switch into pan XY mode and now click and drag I can pan my camera around. If I click C again to go into track Z mode and now click and drag I can push the camera forward and backwards. Now this is all fine and good but what can we actually do with this? Well let's animate our camera to pan onto these layers floating around in 3D space. In order to animate the camera obviously we need to add keyframes. So what you want to do is select the camera layer, press R on your keyboard to reveal the orientation property of the camera. In order to animate our camera we want to keyframe the orientation of the camera but that's not the only property we want to animate. If you press A on your keyboard, I'm holding down shift so I'm adding it to the reveal properties, I'm also going to reveal the point of interest for the camera. Now the point of interest defines the position in space where the camera is looking at. And you can actually clearly see this if you go to the top view and zoom out a little bit. You can clearly see this is the position of your camera down here where the little gizmo is. Then this is the cone that defines the angle of view of your camera. And a little bit further down the road is this little point. And this is the point of interest. This is the position the camera is looking at. So if I move this around you can see the whole camera rotate to basically follow this point of interest. And you can see the property update down here. So I also want to animate the point of interest. Finally I also want to animate the position of the camera. For this again I'm holding down shift and pressing P to add the position property to this little list. There's the position and again add a keyframe to this position property. Now you can either move these elements around in here to create some keyframes. I like to go back into the active camera view, zoom in 
And now I'm at the beginning of the composition. So let's orbit the camera around so that the layers are just out of scene. Maybe let's pan it a little bit to the side as well. So that'll do. Move forward a few frames and then orbit your camera again to bring your layers back into view. The layers are a little bit far away, so let's track in a little bit just to bring the layers a bit more to the foreground. It doesn't have to be too precise. I just want to show you how to animate the camera. So now we've added keyframes for the point of interest and the position. The orientation hasn't actually changed per se. So if you scrub through your composition, you have a cool little 3D animation of the camera panning around and bringing your two layers into view. Let's quickly close the camera properties again and let me show you something else. I said any layer can be a 3D layer, which means a video layer can be a 3D layer. So let's import a video layer. Maybe let's take, yeah, let's take this one. This looks kind of cool. It's just a bunch of clouds. So let's bring this layer into our composition. It doesn't really matter where you position it. It's going to be a 3D layer anyways, but let's drop this in here. Bam, because it's a 2D layer and it sits on top of my two layers, it's going to block out everything else. But go over to the right side and enable the 3D switch for your video layer. So let's position this layer down here in the bottom left side. Um, yes, I know it's not necessarily clean, but I just want to show you how to do this. Also now, as you scrub through your composition, this video will actually play because this layer here is a video layer and the video on the layer will play as you scrub through your composition. Now, the cool thing is because we've positioned this layer in 3D space and we already have a camera with an animation in our scene, this layer will be properly viewed by the camera and it will come into view as the camera pans around. Now you can do some cool stuff with this. Just imagine you can place any video in the 3D space of your scene and animate the camera to move around it, bring them into view, pan around them or do all sorts of crazy stuff. The last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is how to work with lights. Right now our composition does not contain any lights and so all of the layers we have in our composition are fully illuminated. But the moment you add the first light into the scene, all of the 3D layers will probably go pretty dark unless the light actually hits them because once there's a light in the scene, After Effects will properly illuminate any 3D layers in your composition with the lights that you have in your scene. If that sounds confusing, let's quickly create a light so you can see exactly what is happening. In order to create a light, go back to your layer options and click on New, Light. Give your light a useful name. Maybe let's make this white for now. Uh, we can play around with this later. You can change the type of the light. So you can have parallel light, which is literally just a wall of light coming from one side onto your scene. You can have a typical spotlight, you can have a point light, or you can have ambient light. Ambient light illuminates all layers equally, no matter where they are or how they're positioned. But for now, let's create a little point light. Um, you can jack up the intensity, you can define the fall off of the light. Let's keep the radius at default, 1600 something is all right and set the fall off distance to, yeah, 100 seems okay. You also have an option to define whether your light actually casts shadows. That's getting a bit too advanced, so I'm not going to go into this now. Let's just create our little light by clicking on OK. Now, because we've added the light into the scene, all of the layers are now illuminated by this light, or, well, in the case of these two on the left here, they're not illuminated because the light is too far on the right and it doesn't reach those layers. Of course, we can move the light over to those layers. Maybe let's push this over a little bit. You can see it here. So you can see this light now illuminates this layer a little bit, this one and that one. You can kind of see the fall off of it as well. Seems a bit harsh. So you can actually go back into the light settings. Um, I'd like to press Ctrl Shift Y to open it up. Maybe let's make it a little bit brighter, push out the radius and maybe let's make the fall off a little bit softer. That looks a lot cooler already. Let's just go back to the beginning of our composition and play this back. It's a pretty cool effect and it's some basic lighting. Now, one thing I'd actually notice is that the camera movement is kind of jerky and kind of stops a little bit weirdly. One thing I like to do is I like to ease in and ease out the keyframes that I'm setting up. To reveal all of the properties on a layer that have keyframes, simply select the layer. So I'm going to select my camera layer here and press U on your keyboard. You can see point of interest, position and orientation have keyframes on them. We can actually remove the one on the orientation because there is really only one here, which we don't really need. What I want to do is I want to select all of those keyframes and press F9 on the keyboard. This will basically ease them in and ease them out. And if you play this back, you'll see the camera movement will kind of start slowly, speed up and then kind of come to a halt slowly. It just looks a little bit more organic. So if we play this back, it's just a little bit of a smoother camera movement and it just looks a little bit more refined. But let's get back to the lighting. Let's duplicate this light, pressing Ctrl D. 
move this new light up a little bit. Maybe we'll move it there, push it back into the distance a little bit as well and open the light settings by pressing Control Shift Y. Let's change the color. Let's make this one red, for example. And you can see there's now red light being cast onto the layers, which is kind of cool. So jack up the intensity, but maybe we'll make the radius a little bit smaller to make it like a little bit of a dramatic red light. We've got a cool red light in our scene that's now illuminating our layers as well. There's a lot of fun you can have. You can set up all sorts of lights and layers and videos and then move your camera through them in any way that you want. One last thing before I let you go, and that is sometimes you get in a situation where you want to say that all of the layers in my scene should receive light except this one layer that I want to always be fully visible. I don't want any light to affect it. I always want it to look exactly like it did when it was a 2D layer. Because this layer is now a 3D layer is you need to change the material settings on the layer. And the way to do this is to select your layer and reveal the material options by pressing AA. This gives you the material options. Let's make this a little bigger so you can see all of the options you have. Now there are a lot of advanced settings here like whether it receives and casts shadows. What you want to do is there's an accept lights property and right now this is on. If we set this to off we're telling After Effects that this layer should not be affected by any lights in the scene and so let's turn this off and bam it looks exactly like it did in 2D. This light has no impact, this light has no impact but it is still a 3D layer so it still sits in the 3D space of your scene. But this is really useful because sometimes you want some of the layers to always be fully visible like what I did for the intro of this tutorial for example. The actual footage layer except for the pipes that the camera was panning out of was fully visible and I've just disabled the accept lights property on the material options. And I think with this we've covered all of the basics for how to work with 3D in Adobe After Effects. As you can see it is actually really easy to create some great looking 3D effects in Adobe After Effects and I hope you will have a lot of fun with it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always if you have any comments, questions or suggestions just leave them in the section below. Please remember to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button up there, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot and as always you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time I will see you later.